In our previous video, we learned about making predictions. Today, we're going to be counting outcomes and creating sample spaces. This is level 11, stage five, seventh grade math. Taking a look at the level 11 overview for probability, we see that we are on stage number five, counting outcomes and sample spaces. Our state standard says that we're going to represent sample spaces for compound events using methods such as organized lists, tables, and tree diagrams. Our stage five overview, the villains, the vocabulary words. What is a sample space? What is an organized list? What is a tree diagram? And what is the fundamental counting principle? It's not as hard as you think. For cheat codes, how do you make an organized list? How do you make a tree diagram? And how do you use the fundamental counting principle? Vocabulary. A sample space shows all of the outcomes from an event by using braces. And when we talk about braces, they kind of look like this. Not the kind that you wear on your teeth, but it, it's like a parenthesis, but it's kind of pointy. An organized list shows all of the outcomes from an event using a list or table. And a tree diagram shows all of the outcomes from an event using lines that kind of look like tree branches. Here are some fast facts. Sample spaces show the work for compound events, not simple events, compound events. Compound events are when you have more than one event happening at the same time. Now, a simple event is just a one-time deal. Compound events, there's more than one event happening. An easy way to find the total number of outcomes from two or more events is to use the fundamental counting principle. All answers today are just going to be whole numbers. No fractions, guys. Example number one, if you flip a coin, and roll a standard number cube, how many different outcomes are possible? Well, step number one, you want to make a table, not a tic-tac-toe board kind of table, but just making like a T-chart. Step number two, count the total number of different outcomes. Okay, so here's our organized table. We've got the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, because those are all of the possible outcomes from rolling a number cube. And we've got heads and tails underneath the smiley face because those are the two different outcomes from flipping a coin. So you could flip a coin and it could land on heads and you can roll a one, heads and roll two, heads and three, heads and four, heads and five, heads and six. But you could also flip the coin and have it land on tails the number cube could land on one, and you'd have tails one, or tails two, tails three, tails four, tails five, and tails six. Well, if you add up all those different possibilities, you would say that there are 12 different outcomes from rolling a number cube and flipping a coin. Example number two, how many different pizza combinations are possible with three different sized pizzas, small, medium, or large, and five different toppings, pepperoni, sausage, onions, mushrooms, and black olives. Well, step number one, you wanna make a tree diagram. In step two, count the total number of different outcomes. So we're still on example number two, we're making our tree diagram. You could have a small pizza, a medium pizza, or a large pizza. You could have a small pizza with pepperoni on it. That's one. A uh, medium pizza with pepperoni, that makes two. Or a large pizza with pepperoni, that's three. A small pizza with sausage is four. Medium pizza with sausage is five. A large pizza with sausage makes six different type of pizzas. How about onions on a small pizza? That makes seven. Medium pizza with onions is eight. And a large pizza with onions would be nine nine different kinds of pizzas. A small pizza with mushrooms is 10, 11, a medium pizza with mushrooms, 12, a large pizza with mushrooms, 
13. A lar uh, I'm sorry, a small pizza with black olives. A medium pizza with black olives would be 14, and a large pizza with black olives is 15. There are 15 different kinds of pizzas if you pick from small, medium, and large, and if it only has one topping on it. Example number three, our final example. How many different Florida Mega Millions lottery ticket combinations are possible if five numbers are selected from one to 70 and the last number is between one and 25? Use the fundamental counting principle to solve. <laughs> Notice I didn't say make a tree diagram. That would take us days, if not weeks or months to make. Step number one, use the fundamental counting principle. And step number two, reduce the following number by one once a number is used. Example number three. The first number we want to write down is the number 70. There are 70 different numbers to pick from. But once a number is picked, there are 69 remaining. Once a number is picked, there are only 68 remaining. And once that number is picked, there are only 67 remaining. Once that number is picked, there are 66 numbers remaining. The last number is a different color here because they pick from a different group that has 25 different combinations. If we were to multiply 70 times 69, we'd have to buy 4,830 tickets just if there were two numbers. To get three numbers correct, we'd have to purchase 328,440 tickets. How about if we wanted to get four numbers correct? Well, we would have to purchase 22,005,480 lottery tickets. To get five numbers correct, we'd have to purchase 1,452,361,680 tickets just to guarantee that we were going to get those five numbers correct. And to guarantee that we were going to get all six numbers correct and guarantee that we're going to win the lottery, we'd have to purchase 36 billion, 309 million, 42,000 tickets. My point is, it's impossible. Well, I shouldn't say impossible. It is almost impossible. It's highly, highly unlikely for you to buy enough tickets just to guarantee a victory in the lottery. Bzz. Be careful, a common mistake students make when doing the fundamental counting principle is they add the different combinations together. Be sure to remember that you need to multiply to find the total number of outcomes. And finally, our motivational quotes of the day. Here's our first one. I'm not here to be average. I'm here to be awesome. If you're just average, you kind of blend in with everybody else. You don't really stick out. But in order to be awesome, you have to stand out. There's got to be something different about you. Kind of like stars. Stars cannot shine without darkness. Think about that for a second. In order for you to see the stars outside, it's got to be dark outside. That means... In our lives, sometimes there's a challenge, sometimes there's some difficulty that we're going through, and although we think of that as being something bad, it's really an opportunity for us to be able to shine and to show that we were able to overcome the darkness and we were able to really shine and show how awesome we are. Well, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you learned something new about the fundamental counting principle. Join us in our next video as we learn about uh, compound probability of independent events. We'll see you then. See ya!